Welcome to the Pokemon Wheel of Fortune. Some truly Oscar-worthy editing right there. That introduction, it's about a minute long, took me like an hour to put together, like three years ago when I first started this channel. But anyway, why, why'd I even show you that introduction? Well, first things first, hello and welcome. If you're new to the channel, that welcome's for you. And if you've been around, you may be wondering where I've been, because the background's very different. I'm in a completely new country now, so uh, yeah, last couple of months have been very busy. The lighting's not very good, I'll have that fixed within a few days hopefully. But I'm very excited because Regulation H is upon us and I'm going to use this opportunity to bring back my favourite series I've ever done. The first series I've ever done, the Pokemon Wheel of Fortune. I'm going to put the rules for this, uh, this series in the description and probably a pinned comment as well so you can check them out. It's fairly self-explanatory but it means I don't have to explain too much right now, we can get straight into the battles. So let's spin the wheel, see what letter we land on. It's going to be the letter H. So let's head on over to Pokemon Showdown, put in the letter H. Now, I can only build a team using Pokemon that begin with the letter we've landed on. I know I said I'd put the, the instructions in the, in the description and whatever, and I wouldn't explain it, but I'm going to explain a little bit. So it won't be done on Showdown, it will be done on cart. Things I'll be looking out for when I'm building the team is uh, strong abilities like Intimidate, you know, the old classics, Prankster. I'll be looking to see if there's any synergy in terms of weather, weather users, weather abusers. And speed control as well is of course going to be hugely important. Towering, trick room and everything in between. Big threats I'll be looking out for. I expect Regulation H to feature Don Dozo and Mouse Hold and Eyelape fairly prominently. And if you know anything about me, you know that I absolutely love Don Dozo and Mouse Hold and Eyelape. Every time I see them, I just want to give them a big kiss. So I'm going to make sure we have an answer for those every time we build a team. Let's have a look at the options we've got upon us this time. So, any uh, any intimidate? Uh, no, not not as far as I can tell, uh, a cursory glance, no. Not that many fully evolved Pokemon to choose from, honestly. We've got good Trick Room options in terms of setters and both uh, attackers under Trick Room. And we do have the potential to run a Sand Team of sorts as well. We do have Tailwind in Honchkrow and Hydreigon at least. And uh, I, think, I think maybe Hoppip and Hoot Hoot. I do use not very not fully evolved Pokemon in this series because I have to from time to time. So every time I do this, I'm going to quickly run over the uh, the team for you as to why I built it. So we'll do that in the next few seconds. Boom! It's the next day. Do you have Whiplash yet? So here is the uh, here's the team. So Hatterini, we're going with a Trick Room mode. As you can see, it has Magic Powder, which is a move that changes the uh, target Pokemon's type to Psychic, and it also has Brutal Swing. Little bit strange, but if we look at our next slot, it all makes sense. Hariyama to help facilitate the trick room. Of course, we've got fake out, wide guard, because I expect a lot of spread moves to be uh, to be on the ladder. And uh, you'll see that we've got Ghost Terror, Weakness Policy, and Terror Blast. So now you can see the strategy between the first two: get trick room up, and then brutal swing into the uh, terrestrialized Weakness Policy, holding Hariyama, and hopefully steamroll from there. In the next slot, we've got. Hydreigon, I just wanted big damage and it expects Hydreigon. Not really much more to say here, it has some synergy with Hatterini uh, with, with the magic powder, but the speed tiers are a little bit wonky, but uh, it's something that, that we can kind of do as well. Now, into the next two slots, kind of some strange stuff going on here, both not fully evolved Pokemon. Usually I wouldn't feature two on one team, but I kind of felt like I had to here. So, Dondozo answer, I needed some haze. And uh, with Hydreigon on the team and Haunter being slightly faster with the way I've EV'd it, it kind of also makes sense to run Acid Spray as well and we can run the Focus Sash because we didn't have it on any other Pokemon here. Very niche, but I think it's it's usable in specific matchups like the Dondozo. And then we've got Hoppip. So again, Mousehold Annihilate. I want to be able to Rage Powder away the Population Bomb. Some Mousehold do carry safety goggles, of course, but it's one thing that we can do against them. And uh, also, Tailwind option, Sleep Powder Spam as well. So, Hop It makes the team, can you believe it? And then in the last slot, a blast from the past from my channel. I think I've featured this Pokemon twice with this exact set, I believe. Razor Claw, Super Luck, Air Cutter, Honchcrow. Guaranteed critical hits when it doesn't miss. It's 95% accurate uh, Air Cutter. And uh, in terms of type synergy, not amazing, but I think it pairs fairly well it can be used in Trick Room and uh, in Tailwind as well, so it has some synergy with the Hatterini there. And just good spread damage. So that's the team. Let's see if we can get a win. Okay, we have an opponent. And uh, 
firewalk grass court, assuming that's the water Taurus, which is looking at his horns. And there's some redirection and an Oricorio as well. So pretty well rounded team, honestly. Um, I, I think, well, we're just going to go in. We're just going to go in with what we what we've set the team up to do, which is our trick room mode. Uh, and, and we're going to go from there, pretty much. <laughs> so Harini Hariyama, High Dragon, and I don't think there's any need. Definitely no need for Haunter here. Hoppip's always potentially useful. And Honchcrow isn't terrible here either. A lot of flying weakness on the opposing team. But... I'm kind of thinking Hoppip might be the way to go late game... Uh, late game Tailwind. Get our Trick Room mode go in, hopefully pick up some KOs and then get hop up on the field in time just to get the tower wind up and then go from there. But we'll see, we'll see how this pans out. That's a pretty cool trainer card. Fable Vocal Rona, so probably follow me Rage, uh, follow me Rage Powder, follow me Quiver Dance. Stuff going on here. Do you have to be careful of the uh, Flame Body? Because we're not Guts, Hariyama. We'll go straight to the Trick Room. And we're going to fake out. Kind of fable. So I'm more worried about the, uh, the Moonblast coming out. On Tariyama than, than anything else here. So yeah, Quiver Dance comes out. No surprise there. And get a trick from up. So I'm gonna terastalize and go for the brutal swing. The only problem is if they've got the King Gambit in the back. I do have to be wary of Sucker Punch. That will pretty much just dead this strategy in the water. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. So let's see how this goes. I'm fully expecting the, the Follow Me to come out here. But you never know, they might not. And if it's unaware Clefable, then uh, this, this won't carry either way. Oh no, we see the Terror on the opposing side. So I don't think the... Oh, it's the Clefable, okay. Electric type Clefable. Makes sense, I suppose. He's worried about steel offense. No, follow me. Okay. Baited breath right here. Baited breath. Is this enough to get the KO? I feel like it should be. Nice! Nice, nice, nice! Okay. <clears throat> so we pulled the wall over our opponent's eyes there. They did not see that coming. <laughs> and there's the Moonblast. Okay, good stuff. Oricorio comes out. So Hariyama is very much under threat now. We're going to Psychic and Terror Blast that slot. I don't expect it to go through. I expect either a Protect or a Follow Me. So there is the Follow Me. We're going to find out if it is uh, Unaware Fable. I assume it is. Oh, that's a good chunk of damage though. So even even with uh, with the Unaware ability, assuming it is, Hatterini has, has ensured we get this KO. Nice. Okay, this is going quite well. So we're, we're up four to two. And Hariyama goes down. So we're just in time to get Hydreigon on the field now. And 
We're hoping it's not King Gambit. It is King Gambit. Uh, I mean, we we can we can deal with King Gambit actually, considering that the they've already used their terrestrialization. Yeah, I think this is the play all day long. No safety goggles, thankfully. Can High Dragon survive this turn, though? I'll be for the Swords Dance. Okay, great. Was worried about the Iron Head flinch, but we don't have to worry about that. Oh, of course, should have seen that coming. <laughs> that could make things a little bit tricky in the end game. And our berry, I mean, we didn't even need a berry to survive that. Nice! How often do you see a Dark Pulse one-shot King Gambit? Okay, this is going very, very well. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Now I'm kind of wishing we didn't bring the Hop Hip. Oh no, Hop Hip's Hop fine. If Hop Hip makes an appearance, we can just Rage Powder everything away from this Oricorio. So... That reading will go down here. I'll get the attack off first though, won't I? Because we're, we're still under Trick Room. Yeah, last turn Trick Room. And there's no reason not to attack. GG, there we go, we got the win. First battle, nice. Very, very nice indeed. So that went very well. So let's do another one, see if we can get a second win. See if uh, we end up seeing the Hoppy or the Haunter. Okay, we have an opponent. It's like a dual weather team. Sun and Sand and Trick Room. Tyranitars cause me all kinds of issues in this team, and Sylveon to be fair. <laughs> they're, they're covering their, their dark weakness pretty well. So. Yeah, the Tyranitar is a problem. You know what? I don't think Hariyama is a particularly bad Pokemon to choose here because we've got the thick fat ability as well. So I think that's something that we can utilize. Oh, you know what? You know what? Actually, call me crazy, but. Uh... Haunter, maybe? Haunter, Hunchcrow, Hatterini, Hariyama. So we're going with Haunter because I think it has a pretty good lead matchup into most of this team alongside a decent uh, special attacker in Honchkrow. If it's the Lilligant in the lead, we can... It is a Lilligant, so we can, we can do some damage there. We've also got the Focus Sash in case they go for the Follow Me... Sorry, the After You Eruption play. I hate this lead matchup. Yeah, it's just after you. Not ideal. So, here's what we need to do. Relying on this thick, fa thick, thick fat ability. <laughs> Almost said something else there. Um, 
to have us survive this turn. We're well and truly on the back foot. Yeah, let's do the same thing. No reason not to. It's a lot of damage. Okay, so we're going to Acid Spray again. We'll go for the fake out. I don't think there's any reason not to. <clears throat> Fairly certain that specs Torkoal. It does still flinch, right? Good, good, it does. Okay, well that's the Lilligant gone. And we do now have Wide Guard on the field. Okay, so I see a way to win this. And it involves a bit of wide guard, unfortunately. So I'm going to play super reactive to my opponent here, but I'm fairly certain that is Specs Torkoal. Oh, nice, nice damage. And is it going to be the trick room by any chance? Okay, excellent. So, assuming that is very much Specs Torkoal, it's not doing too much damage now. So I can start thinking about. repositioning somehow. <clears throat> Don't want to terrestrialize it. I mean, if a, that's the thing, right? If uh, if the Uranguru has a psychic move, then we'll be in a little bit of trouble. I'm going to Terrastalize. I'm going to go for the Terror Blast into Torkoal. This might be a terrible play. Because they could have, they could very easily have foul play as well, of course. But I, I don't see a, a Terror anywhere else on the team being particularly useful to me at this point. We're basically saying, yeah, you've got a Psychic move. So they're just going ham with this eruption. That was a crit. Wow. Okay, so Torkoal's down. Bulldoze. Not the move I was expecting. There's no way that's weakness policy Torkoal. They were, they were like, it's weakness policy Tyranitar. That's what it is. Is that what's in the back? Sylveon in the back, okay. Oh yeah, that's not great either. So saving the terrestrialization for Honchkrow probably would have been the, uh, the better play. But it is what it is. Three turns left to Trick Room. We're gonna swap. Hatterini in. We're gonna go for the Wide Guard.
crazy passive play here, but <laughs> I've got to do it. I, they're probably just going for the hyper voice, right? The way they just kept hitting the eruption button over and over. Okay, they go for a detect. Uh, the foul play, unfortunately. Oh, I was hoping they wouldn't so we could go for the uh, magic powder play. Although they haven't terrestrialized yet. Which could uh, put damage on that as well. Okay, let's think about this. Two turns left the trick room. I'm fully expecting the terrestrialization here, and it's not going to work, the magic powder, if they do go for it. So no terror yet. I assume that's how magic powder works. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Quick attack. Yep, fair play, fair enough, makes sense. So this is the last turn of Trick Room. We're about to knock out our own Haunter, I just realised. <laughs> Which is fine, because it's not going to survive the turn anyway. But it's probably getting quick attacked. It is. Okay, and that's going to come down to Haunch Crow. And how much damage it can do. Gotta respect the terror now though, you've got to. So there's gonna be an air cutter all day long. Right? I think so. Yeah, it's gotta be. Here we go. I think it's GG. Yeah, nowhere near enough. Go for the Instructor. That's just going to be a quick attack. But the, the following Hyper Voice is going to be an issue though. GG. What can you say? That's a tough one. Uh, we're playing. Had to play super reactively there. But we almost, almost pulled it back. So GG. That was H. We did get a win. So let's uh, let's spin the wheel again. So the first episode down, and I'm starting to remember just how difficult this challenge can be sometimes. But I think H is quite a tough one to start off with. So let's spin the wheel and see what we'll be using in the next episode. It's going to be M. Let's see what Pokemon we can use on our team. Okay, so M. Straight away we have Intimidate with my boss Stiff. Quite a, an extensive list to choose from, honestly. I'm feeling a lot better about this. Of course, we've got Prankster in Murkrow as well. Uh, Mighty Yen also gets Intimidate, but we'll see if, if it makes the team. But more so just to point out the kind of abilities we're dealing with here. I think this should be a bit simpler than the previous episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, I will catch you in that next episode. And, uh, yeah, see you there. You take care. Mm -hmm.